So as I move my reference on, I'm just going to drag and drop. I have my mushrooms right here. I'm thinking about foreground, middle ground, and background, right? I'm going to put my foreground near the bottom. In an ideal world, they're plenty big enough. And I might decide, yeah, I like that composition, but maybe it'd be even better flipped. I can right click even before I place the smart object and flip it horizontally and kind of try that out. And that looks a little bit more in line with what I want. So I'm going to keep that there. Hit return. They're still smart objects. They would need to be rasterized before I could erase them. I'm going to show you a different way. Then I want the sulfur pool. That's going to be middle ground. So I put it about midway. This is a huge reference. Plenty big enough. So I shrink it down to the size I think is going to be useful. And keep it over here in the middle ground. Hit return. Now I need the spooky trees. That's like the perfect size. That's going to be kind of the middle ground right there. And then I need the universe. That's going to be the, the background. So I'm going to put it at the top. So many of us will have more than five references that we use. I always intend to keep these things, these examples really simple. But the perfectionist in me, you know, I get more ambitious and I might decide to add other things. And that's why I have this reference folder full of other options, right? I even have this little, um, you know, satellite image of a sunrise glint off of a planet if I want that somewhere in the, the background. But let's first work with these five. So this is what's called rough placing. I'm going to start with the background. And I'm going to roughly place it. Make sure that your rough placements more than cover the edges of your sketch, because you don't want to have little gaps at the edges that you then have to crop down. Your furthest background image is the only one you don't need to cut out, right? Because everything sits on top of it. The problem is, just like when we did our, our vector emojis, when I cover it up, I can't see my plan anymore. So what can I do? I'm going to select my sketch and make a duplicate of it onto a new layer, Command-J. So I'm on the background layer. I'm going to move that sketch up above everything, and then I'm going to onion skin it. Do you remember what that means? Okay. Yep, you play with opacity. You make it like a thin tracing sheet layer. So I'm going to take the opacity down to at least 50%. Maybe even more like, it depends how clear your sketch is, maybe even more like 30%. So I can see that the universe here really does overlap with all the edges I need to cover for my sketch. So now I'm going to bring in what goes over the background, which is going to be the middle ground. So this layer, I bring it over the top. The problem is, if I just put that on there, it covers up everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosely select from it. To do that, I'm going to use the lasso. And I want everything at the top, but I don't need everything at the bottom. So I'm just going to do a loose selection like this. I'll turn off my sketch, which I'll lock so I don't accidentally choose that. So you see my loose selection of my smart layer. So instead of rasterizing, you never need to rasterize in this. Instead, you make a loose selection with your lasso, and then you hit Command-J. And you just need to be on that layer. Sorry, my misty tree layer. Command-J. Now, that makes a copy of what I lassoed. That copy is already rasterized. So now I can just turn off the smart layer. 
And now I have a rasterized layer that I can put where I think it needs to be. And here is super basic lazy compositing. If I like this and I want to blend in that background, I can just take opacity and start blending it in. But we're going to do it a little bit better than that, right? But that's the idea, is eventually that galaxy is going to be coming through the, the cloudy, misty sky. Which has a very weird horizon line. Now what goes on top of this? It's the sulfur pool. I can just use my sketch to show me. So I'm going to grab the sulfur pool layer. I'm going to move it up above. I'm going to hit Command T, good old friend Command T. If they're organic resources instead of man-made, then you can hold down Shift and stretch them. And that can be very helpful. So I'm going to try putting it right there. And then I'm going to loose select it again. So for this one, I don't need the stuff at the top. I definitely don't need this, this roadside. So I'm going to lasso around it, giving myself plenty of overlap. Roughly lasso. I can use everything on the bottom. That's fine. Then I hit Command J. And then I just turn off the smart layer underneath. Okay, so now I have three things layered, roughly. The galaxy the trees, and this sulfur pool, all guided by this onion skin sketch on top. Now that's a pretty boring landscape because it's just middle ground and background right now. So I need these foreground elements. And so I'm going to move in the rocks. I'm going to use the move tool. The move tool with auto select is very helpful because I can just click on it and it will automatically pick that layer. I'm going to move that layer up. A shortcut for that is command left bracket, but you can also just drag and drop. And instead of just dropping it on there, this is where it's really helpful to do a rough cutout. So I'm going to use my guide of my sketch. And yeah, that's about the size I want. And so I am going to roughly cut it out along the edge that I think is most useful. Turn off my onion skin sketch. And I want, you know, this rock maybe. You can always erase it later. And maybe this one, I can always erase it later. I do not want the waterfall. But notice I'm giving myself quite a bit of overlap. So I loosely cut with the lasso. Uh-oh. <laughs> I loosely cut with the lasso around where my image is. I'm going to save it because it's having trouble with... Uh, my leftover hard drive space, something called the scratch disks. So be sure to save your work because that will keep your progress. And then it's a good idea, if you ever get those kind of memory warnings, to just make sure it's saved, close Photoshop fully, and that will clear its memory by quitting it, and then you can reopen your file. And that's why it's so important to save with your name so you know what file you're reopening. Okay, so I've almost rough placed all five. And that's because we're working at pretty high resolutions now. And if you need to save memory, once you've cut out from your smart layers, you can delete the smart layers. Because all that smart layer is is the photo being brought into Photoshop. Okay, so this is where I was. I am rough cutting around the rocks. I'm going to do that with the lasso tool. 
and I'm rough cutting with a lot of overlap. I know I'm not using the waterfall, but I'm cutting into it so that I have it as an overlap. Once you've selected around it, you hit Command J, and then you turn off the smart layer behind it. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete these smart layers by selecting the, the turned off layer that I've copied from and then just hitting delete. And then there's just one more. The mushrooms. The only smart layer I'm not deleting is the universe, that background layer. Because that's the only one I don't need to cut out from because it's everything goes on top of it. So I'm going to take these mushrooms, going to move them up, use my guiding sketch, put them in place. I've already flipped them. I get to decide how large I want them to be. Do I want them to overlap that rock? I think so. I think I want them about there. And then I'm just going to do a rough cutout especially because the background behind the mushrooms is so blurry. There's such a big depth of field pool there. I'm going to want to erase all of that. But I want some of this overlap of all the moss to flow into the rest of my composition. Ah, so I wasn't thinking. I was just kind of moving mindlessly, and I selected what I wanted to delete. And I hit delete, and then it said you can't do that because it's a smart object. Right, I'd have to rasterize it first. So I could do that. I could right click, rasterize, and then delete. Or I could say select inverse, and that selects everything else, and then hit Command J, and then turn off the smart layer and delete the smart layer. So there's lots of, lots of ways to do different things. This is my rough composition as is. And if I feel like with just these five elements, that it's a little boring, not as interesting as my sketch perhaps, it's because they haven't been integrated yet, right? Like I haven't brought this tree in front of the sulfur pool. I think that'll be cool with those roots. And I haven't brought the galaxy through the sky, but if I feel I need another element, I can always bring that in. So I go back to my references. <clears throat> And I think what would be a cool element maybe on the horizon or on the edge, maybe I want this kind of uh, solar flare thing, this sunrise beam. So you can always adjust and change from your sketch based on what you think will look good. I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to layer it right on this kind of curved horizon of this fantasy landscape anyway. Maybe make it just a little bit bigger. All right. And then I'm going to push that behind on top of the universe. And at that point, I know what my composition is supposed to fill with my guides, and I know the overlaps that I have. So at this point, I can save some memory by closing in my crop. Ah. It looks like I have to save first. And I think it's actually going to help my memory if I rasterize now these smart objects, because some of these are just a lot larger than I need. And scaling them down and then rasterizing them locks them into the current resolution. All right, so now when I save, now I'm ready to kind of start tightening it up and start playing with color, color and lighting variations to help them match. And we're going to work it from the background forward. And the good news is we have an hour to do this. All right. So I'm going to see if it lets me have enough memory to crop it, because that will save memory as well. But the good news.